Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome, welcome. Happy Wednesday. Today I have a really interesting class. We're going to talk. We'll be talking about Libby. Yay! <laughs> it's our new e, e oh, excuse me ebook and audiobook service that we have for the library today. I'm going to have instructions on it to kind of give you some step by step on how to sign and everything. And then we'll also talk about some other library resources that we have as well. And I'll be doing kind of a little bit of a walkthrough once you sign in. So welcome to class. Kind of say hello into the class. Very glad that you're here. And let me introduce myself. My name is Alex Cooper. I teach computer classes for the Columbia County Library in Evans, Georgia, and also Harlem and Ucha Creek, now Grovetown, because of our new beautiful Grovetown Library. Very happy to be with you today. Now, one of the great features of being here with um, while I'm doing it live is because you can actually ask questions and everything. And the big thing is, uh, feel free to post any kind of questions you have into the chat. Happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, if I can't answer any more detailed questions, maybe we can look for it together. Okay. And I always like to start off with how can I help? Okay. What questions do you have? All right. So feel free to post that at any time. As everybody kind of comes into the classroom, I'll kind of post a little bit of information about some of the other classes that we have coming up. And I'll disappear for a minute. As you can see, it's uh, Halloween month, of course, October. So we're doing a bunch of coding classes for Halloween and everything. This morning we did a fun how to make a scratch uh, Halloween card with Frankenstein's monster and stuff and bats. It was a lot of fun. Uh, tomorrow, we're actually, we're going to be doing an app swap class at 11 a.m. So come join me on that. It'll be for the Grovetown Library. And it'll be here on our YouTube channel. And then the afternoon, we're going to be doing an introduction to Google Cardboard VR. Okay, so we'll be using our cell phones to do VR and doing videos and kind of introduction to some of the fun things that we can do with Google Cardboard. And then next week, we'll be doing another Halloween Scratch Basics class again. Let's make a fun card. And on the 21st, we're actually going to be doing a gadget help with me on Zoom. And on the 29th, we're going to be doing that as well. So just call in to the Harlem Library, Grove Town Library, contact them or, or walk up and ask questions. Just say you want to schedule a time on the 28th or the 29th, and they'll give you more information about that. So lots of great Halloween coding, Scratch, Python, coding, all kind of focused on Halloween stuff and Unity 2 and Raspberry Pi Halloween stuff and also the end of the month of 29th we're going to be making a spooky game so come join me for kind of a twist on some of our coding classes um, just kind of some Halloween fun kind of fun for all ages <laughs> and we'll talk about Libby in a second so I'll kind of skip over that one but just to kind of let you know that our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Curbside Holds Pickup is available, and you can go to gchrl.org for more details. Or you can call in the library with questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Do realize that right now we're actually having a subscribe drive. If we can get 100 subscribers to our YouTube channel, we'll get our own personalized YouTube address. So uh, you friends or family, please, please encourage them to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Or you can search for our YouTube channel by searching YouTube for GCHRL videos and it'll pop right up. All right, so let's go ahead and go back here. Now we're also going to be talking about other resources that we have as well. There we go. I'm back. 
We're going to be talking about other resources as well, and I'll get do a little bit of a demonstration about using Libby too. So our main focus is about Libby, but we'll also include some of the other resources too that we have uh, for the library. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's get started with that. Yay! So let's kind of cover what we're going to talk about. What, to what topics we're going to cover this afternoon, okay? We're going to talk about what you need, okay? That's a big one. We'll talk about the, uh, the Pines app, putting books on hold or newing books, um, you know, finding about late fees and stuff, listen, overdue books and fees, and about knowing what your digital card number is, which is very important because the sign up for Libby, you do need to know what your library card number is. Then we'll be talking about ebooks on Libby, e audiobooks on Libby, and then we'll talk about how to use Libby. I'll be doing a little bit of demonstration about Libby, so we'll spend a good little bit amount of time with Libby because it's our new service that started October 1st, of course. We'll be talking about our RB Digital app, which will still be available. It's not going to be available for ebooks or audiobooks, and hopefully I'll answer all your questions of going from RB Digital to Libby. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get to answer all those good questions. And one of the things also is that the RB Digital will still have magazines, comics, and that's still how you can access uh, subscriptions for Acorn TV. We'll talk about that. And then we'll talk about some other resources as well. Some law resources, if you're doing any kind of research, how to access Galileo, Galileo Homework for Kids, and also can some continuing education using universal classes, kind of what's available with that, Mango learning a new language, and also a little known GCHRL.org uh, resources, uh, maybe, little known, okay? And then I'll list some references too. So before we get started, does anybody have any questions? Any questions out there? <laughs> Okay, so feel free to ask a question. Like I said, there may be a little bit of a delay between you posting there and me replying. But if you are watching this video, um, you know, that has been pre-recorded, uh, then you can actually fast forward and rewind and stuff. Okay, so this kind of gives you a little bit of a brief outline of everything we're going to cover. Now get ready. Here comes animation. Whoosh. All right, so our animation flies in for us. What you will need, the big thing that you will need is your library card. If you don't have a library card, you need to contact the library to be able to get a library card. You can call the library Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Librarians are happy to help you with that. Of course, you can stop into the library as well at the uh, designated times and everything. A big thing about it is also going to gchrl.org, which is our website. And then click in the menu button. You can choose the site uh, to gain uh, access to a lot of our free services after you click the menu button. So basically, you can access it through it. And I will repeat this more than once. Each service may need you to create its own username and password. Okay. So if you already have a password um, uh, connected up to the Pines, that's great. Some other sources, RB Digital, you may have to set up another password. I haven't had to do that with Libby. All I did was I put in um, my um, my uh, uh, my brain won't say credit card. Number. <laughs> it's not that. I had to put in my library card number. Thank you very much. I had to put in my library um, card number, and we'll talk about the different steps for that in uh, just a little bit. All right. So let's talk about our Pines app. So the big thing about having the Pines app, or you can go to gapines.org. Once you sign in, okay, with your username and password, or you sign in with your library card number, download, and you'll have some functionality to have in the search. So let's say you search for an author. It'll show what books is available to actually um, be checked out, physical books. It also will list some of the ebooks and audiobooks as well. I'm not 100% sure it's going to work now with the library 
uh, switching over to Libby, but we'll have to investigate that a little bit further because we've only been using Libby since the first, okay? So the other thing is you can also look and see if there's audiobooks are available as well. And you can actually check those out and you can actually order uh, the books, you know, the physical books and stuff from the other libraries as well. And they will actually, you know, come and you can pick it up from the library at the set time. Also, this will talk about uh, what books you have on hold and what fines you may have incurred by not returning a book or something on time. So you'll already know that before you go to the of course, our big one too is that it actually has the library card, okay? So right here, it actually does have the library card number on there, and that actually shows that uh, what your card number is, and you could actually use that to access uh, things like Libby, and of course, know what your library card is, so you, numbers so you can check library books out. All right, let's talk about some of our pitfalls of our services. Many library services need you to set up a username and password. I know I may have already said that once, but it, trust me, it's worth repeating. Uh, to try to keep try to keep the same one uh, to make it easier to remember. Holds are put are pulled on Monday. At least that's the way it has been in the past. Um, but I would call into the library Monday through Friday, um, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Just kind of ask librarians about. Uh, different books on hold and situation also in the curbside holds pickup as well many sites need to use to use the gchrl.org as a gateway to log in and some services uh, ex uh, including ebooks may have limited or a certain number of checkouts uh, the big thing about that is if the book's not available you can put it on hold and then you can actually get it later okay and uh, or the I guess I use should use a new um, Libby turns kind of like a watch list, and then it actually will keep it and then let you know when you can check it out too. There's a limited number of stuff, and the best thing I can tell you is just try again later. Okay, if you're trying to check out Acorn TV or something, so it's not available, try again an hour, try again tomorrow, try again a week, and usually it'll become available. Let's talk about RB Digital briefly, and then we'll jump into using Libby. So the big thing about RB Digital, okay, is the big one is everything has no late fees. Now, if you've used, and the reason I'm talking about RB Digital first is because if you've used RB Digital in the past, this is where you went to see your eBooks and also our audio books too, okay? So now that we've switched over to Libby, that is not where you go to get uh, to, um, <laughs> that's not where you go anymore. And you'll get a message saying that we have switched over. And let me show you. So if you do go to RB Digital and try to access the books, realize it'll probably say something the effect of we have switched over to using Libby. Okay. All right. So that what is still available on RB Digital is our other content. And I'm trying to, I'm about to show you something. Give me one second. Okay. All right. 
So if I actually go, and let me log in real quick. All right, now it's loading. <laughs> All right, here we go. So here's our RB Digital, okay? So of course, everything switched over to Libby now, but this is still where you access the rest of our information. So if you've used it before, let's say the, the things that are still available here are like the comics are still available, okay? And also, if I go back, also where you access the magazines as well is our RB Digital, okay? There we go. So it'll list that. It also has my collection listed on there as well where you check out the magazines. And the big one, of course, is to actually be using the app, okay? All right, now let's go ahead and let's talk about Libby. Okay, so now let's talk about our Libby resource. And I also have the Libby website to kind of show a little bit. Okay, so Libby is our new resource for the latest ebooks and audiobooks. With Libby, you can borrow free ebooks and digital audiobooks from our library. All you need is your library card. Okay. So, the big ones that we have going on is that we talk about basically you download the app, and I'll be talking about this a little bit so we kind of go back and forth. Okay. Download the app, and the big one is it'll ask you to search for your library. Now, the, the big learning curve for ours is that you don't search for just like Columbia County Library or something like that. We're part of a big um, regional service or system, I should say. So you actually are searching for right here where it says, remember what my, our website is? GCHRL.org. Well, that stands for Greater Clarks Hill Regional Library System. Okay. So when Libby says search for your library, she means to search for a Greater Clarks Hill Regional Library System, okay? And then it'll give you two choices. Choose the one that says Georgia Download Destination and enter your library card number. Now, that's it. You're ready to go. You're in the system and you're ready to go. Now, I have a little video. Pull that up, and then we can actually view our website a little bit too. All right, so let's look at our website and it has a little bit of interactivity there. So this is Libby's website. It's a part of Overdrive. Okay. So in that website is Overdrive forward slash apps forward slash Libby. So if you want to be in the same place I am. They also have a QR code. And if you actually took a picture of that with your phone right now, it should actually pop up and that should be available. Okay. So they kind of have a little bit of walkthrough. Hopefully in a little bit I'll get the... Um, the video I wanted to show uh, to work 
but I have something updating. So I wasn't able to show that just right a second. But anyway, so it's kind of showing us around the app a little bit. It's going to give us access to more content. I love how their website does that and then the Libby hides or whatever. <laughs> anyway, access to more, more books. Okay. Reading happiness, as they say. Big one, of course, is if it's an ebook. Listen, you know, see an e audiobook or a digital audiobook. Listening to it in your car is a big one, and it should be compatible with basically most um, ways of listening to things in your car as well, especially if it's just a nice Bluetooth connection. There are ways that you can download the ebooks and audiobooks and listen and read offline as well. That's in case if you're in, let's say, you go to the mountains or something to have a bad connection, you could actually use it that way. And also, if you have Kindle devices, you can send the books there as well. Lots of great recommendations here um, by different um, PC companies, of course, Time Magazine and stuff. Talk about browsing, searching. And discovering okay it's called a state-of-the-art reading experience you can change the size of the text if you want to to make it a little bit more legible okay so if there is a, a visual issue maybe you have you just want to have to not go get your glasses you can actually have it so the text is larger on the screen and then when you're listening to an audiobook it has a nice built-in audio player and it will bookmark uh, your place and where you are too so let's look at our quick little video here. Meet Libby, the free one tap reading app from your library. With Libby, you can borrow free ebooks and digital audiobooks from your library. All you need is a library card. When you open Libby for the first time, she'll help you find your library. Then you can explore your library's collection and borrow titles or place holds instantly. On your shelf, you'll find all your loans and holds, as well as any titles you've tagged. Loans are automatically downloaded for offline use when you're on Wi-Fi. If you're using mobile data, you can stream titles until you're on Wi-Fi. Your loans are returned automatically on their due dates, so you never need to worry about late fees. Tap Manage Loan to see more options for each title, like returning early. Tap a title to open it and start reading. If you belong to a library in the United States, You'll see the option to send most ebooks to Kindle or to start reading in Libby. Use the bottom navigation to switch between your shelf, your library, and your current read. In the Libby menu, you can add a library, change your app settings, get help, and more. Download Libby to start borrowing today. Happy reading! All right, so that's kind of a quick introduction. And I want to show you. So is Libby free? Okay, hey Mac, how are you? Welcome, welcome. She says it is, it's different for certain. But there are more books, and you can keep uh, them for 21 days. Yes, absolutely. Does depend on the book, okay? And uh, of course, how many books are available as well. But like I said, you can just try again. All right. So is Libby free? Yes, Libby is completely free. It's free to install and there's no subscription costs or no in-app purchases and no late fees. This is free for your library. So your library is paying um, the services and everything for you to be able to use this. Um, and uh, all you need is a valid library card from your local library and you can access all this information, okay? So the other big part about this is uh, there's no late fees in any way. You know, the books just expire, kind of like what I mentioned before. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and let's go back to our handout and let's kind of continue talking about Libby. Okay, remember the big thing is that you're looking for Greater Clarks Hill Regional Library System and then you choose Georgia Download Destination and then enter your library card and then it should be available. So when did Libby start? Well, Libby started for us October 1st of this year, okay? Uh, RB Digital eBooks and audiobooks are moving over to Libby. Now, I know this is a lot of text on here, but hopefully it's gonna answer some other questions, follow-up questions you may have about using the app or concerning about RB Digital transfer over. Borrow and enjoy all the same great eBooks and audiobooks you loved on RB Digital. Transition from RB Digital process could take up to 24 hours. So once you first sign on, if you don't if you don't have access to Libby yet, just wait a day. Uh, once the transfer is complete, you'll be able to access eBooks and audiobooks on the Libby app. Okay. Remember, if you currently have a book checked out in the RB Digital app, it will be available through the remainder of the lending period, so you can finish your title without disruption. Or risk of losing your place in the book okay now the books you have on hold will not transfer from RB digital and your wish list and checkout history will not move uh, to Libby okay so if you do want that information best to go ahead and just save it open up RB digital um, you know writing some of that down of course you could do screenshots trying to save that information um, your book history and all that so that you'll have it but it does not um, translate over to Libby okay and the website we went to was overdrive.com uh, forward slash app forward slash Libby to give a little bit more information about it all right getting ready for Libby okay so do not rush out and purchase a new reader okay devices like white uh, paper white are reputable uh, to work with Libby, okay? Reputed, okay, to work with Libby. It's an interesting way of saying that. It is not too early to download the Libby app from your app store and install on your device. However, our library will not show as available until the transfer has been completed. You will need to search for the Greater Clarks Hill Library System in Libby. If you currently have holes with RB Digital, this is what we just talked about a minute ago. Hold, this is more detail. Holds will not be moved to Libby. You will need to place your ebook or audiobook on hold again in Libby. If you want a record of your RB Digital holds, you can export your transaction history from the RB Digital uh, website. Just click My Account and then Profiles, and it'll show all that information. Okay. In addition, your wish list and checkout history will not be moved automatically to Libby. You will be able to recreate your wish list using tags in Libby and mark titles you have already read using tags in Libby. You can export your transaction history from RB Digital website under My Account um, and under Profiles. Only ebooks and audiobooks will be moved to Libby at this time. Like I said, RB Digital is still going to have the comics and the magazines. Okay. And they said they'll let you know when these are ready to be transferred to Libby. Okay. It will happen in the future, but we're not there yet. Conclusion. Our library is proud to continue to offer you a wide selection of digital titles for you to access anytime, anywhere through Libby, the one tap reading app. We appreciate your patience in transitioning to Libby. Okay. Okay. So we kind of come to the end of us talking about Libby. I did have a video I was going to show some hands on stuff. But apparently it's not ready. That's very aggravating for me as well. Let's see. 
it was just kind of a walk through showing every walking around lit walking around with Libby and everything let me see if I can do one more thing here gotta speed this process up Give me a minute. So, is there any questions so far? Any questions about Libby? Okay, so I guess I'll talk about some of our other resources. And like I said, I did have a video I was going to show, but apparently it is not ready yet. Um, but the kind of the biggest things to kind of take away from what we have covered is basically just kind of using the Libby app. If you're not familiar with it, just kind of get involved in it. Get involved in it. Sign, sign up in it. Sign, sign up for it. And then it actually will give you access. And like I said, it's more um, books than we actually had before. And in the future, the magazines and then the, um, the other ways that we can access uh, the comics will actually be moving over there as well. Okay. Now, let's see. Where is... So basically one of the neat things Libby does is she'll ask you questions about stuff. So this is one of the ways that it kind of walks you through having this. So do you have a library card? You say yes. And then you can actually say, if you have, have a Libby on another device, you should simply copy your card across. Okay, copy from other device. Otherwise you can look it up in the library name. So I'll do a search for library. And then we're going to do I should just have to do Clark's Hill. Let's see. Yeah, there it is. So when you first install the app, that's what happens. Greater Clark's Hill. And then it'll pop up and say Georgia Download Destinations. Okay. You click that. And it may ask you for my library card, but I'm not going to give it right now. There it is. So it'll give you all these other things. And you just say Georgia Download Destinations. Click that and then it'll ask you for your card number. And that should be it. Now, like I said, there is possibly a delay that can happen, okay? So just realize that. And that if there is any kind of delay with the transfer that can actually happen, do realize that it can take just 24 hours and they'll get everything transferred over, okay? So like I said, this is something that's new um, it is, uh, you know, just everything has switched over from the first, okay? So thank you for your patience if there's any issues or anything like that. And definitely feel free to contact the librarians if you do have any other questions. But I do feel personally feel like the biggest hurdle is the one I just covered was basically signing in, signing in to Libby, and doing the Greater Clarks Hill Regional Library System and then clicking Georgia Download Destination and then having your library card, okay? Definitely feel free to ask any other questions. 
hopefully at the end of where we talk about some of our other resources um, the video that I did want to show will become available and I'll be able to show that if not it was just kind of a little bit of a quick walkthrough of using Libby and if you can sign in with your library card today you'll be accessing the same information <laughs> okay all right so let's go ahead and let's start talking about some of our other resources that we actually have through the library um, mostly this actually comes about because we do a basic class that well, I would say basic class it's actually a class that's called library resources and apps okay we've been doing that for about two years now at the library of course we're doing all we're staying safe and everything and uh, doing classes from home so one of the things that has been going on is that uh, folks, you know, when things are updated, we actually add things to it. Folks ask questions about stuff. And knowing Libby's, Libby is kind of our newest thing, we wanted to at least talk about it for a long time and see if we can answer any kind of questions and hopefully, you know, answer questions that you have too. A big thing about it is it's switching over it not having things that you had on hold before or it doesn't have what the uh, long-term uh, thing is. Uh, hey Mac, so is RB Digital still working? My understanding is the ebook part of RB Digital is not working anymore. It's RB Digital is only used for um, the magazines. Let's see if I can. Hmm. Only for magazines and the comics now. And eventually those will switch over too. Okay. Well, that's a very good question. Also, RB Digital is still used for signing up for Acorn TV, which we're going to talk about that in just a minute. So some of this thing we're about to talk about, I'll kind of abbreviate. But if you do have it come in and you have any questions about uh, Libby, still happy to answer those as well. Okay, so let's talk about uh, some of our other resources. Now, like I said, this is going to gchrl.org. Go into the menu and then accessing them that way. Law Depot is one of those that they do want you to have a set up a separate username and password. Okay, so do realize it may ask you to do that, but you do need to go to gchrl.org first, click on the little link, and then it'll send you over to uh, the law depot so it takes our the code from our website and lets them know about it and then there you go oh absolutely Mac still it is still there all right so what kind of things that people I've at when like doing this class in the past and stuff I've asked the librarians I said what what uh, legal things are people looking for? And they kind of answer, well, mostly it's stuff about last will and testament, living wills, bill of sale, child medical and consent forms, and that's kind of some of the big things that are on there. Also do realize that uh, the library in Evans and in Grovetown actually can get um, uh, things notarized as well. Of course, you should be able to do that as your bank as well. So one-stop shop you can get actually uh, something uh, set up, printed, and then get it notarized as well. Okay. Uh, what is Galileo? Well, Galileo is a website that you can actually get access to the library. A lot of the times with Galileo, you do need a have a uh, the password for Galileo. Just contact the library, and they'll give you the current password for the library. Uh, and you can access all this from home. You can access a hundred different databases, index thousands of periodicals and scholarly journals and stuff. This information isn't available through free search engines or web directories, so this is not stuff that's just readily available on Google. Okay. Over, uh, over 10,000 journal titles are provided in full text. Other resources include encyclopedias, business directories, and government periodicals, okay, or publications, excuse me. <laughs> there also is a kid version as well. 
Galileo. You still do need a password for it, but this one here is Galileo basically for kids, and they're really good because they actually have it broken up into different um, age or school ages or school grades. That should have, that's what I should say. So let's talk about our other resource here. Let's talk about Acorn TV. Okay. So can you access free British shows and movies? Absolutely you can. Okay. There's also another service called IndieFlix. And there's independent film shows as well. Now with the library, you can actually have and Quello, Stingray Quello is also live concerts that you can access. Uh, the way this works is, is it's a free seven day subscription. And after that subscription is up, go back in there and you can actually do it easiest with the RB Digital app. Just resubscribe and then you'll get access for another seven days. Okay. It's not a one time use, it's continuous. Uh, the library does pay for it every time you use it. So basically the, the library just says, if you subscribe to it, please use it. And that's really about it, okay? Let's talk about what's available on Acorn TV. And I have a quick little trailer I can play too. So this is the uh, RB Digital website. And it also kind of talks about all the movies and experiences that is accessible. Okay. And they actually have a little trailer, so I'm going to play that. Rule number one, get them laughing. That's basically the holy grail of treasure hunting. Well, no, the holy grail is the holy grail of treasure hunting. Are you going to be pedantic? Do you bathe at all? Yes, I do. Well, it's obviously time to step it up. I seem to spend my life searching for patterns. What if there isn't one? She's done nothing wrong. Why did you just leave? I have come halfway around the world for you. I'm not giving up that easily. Are you interrogating me? Well, of course not. Uh, simply asking the questions that need to be answered in order to find out who killed him and why. I figured you out. Well, you've succeeded where so many ex-wives didn't. Are you a nine? It's all over this, Jack. No question, you were next. This is not a game, mon ami. Tell me the truth now. It is your only chance. So that's just kind of a little bit of a sample of the things that they have on Acorn TV. So let's talk about that a little bit more. Um, so basically, once you sign in with RB Digital, you'll get a set up set up a username and password, and then you can actually um, install the app or the channel on something like a Roku device or um, a fire stick and then you actually sign in with your username password and then you can access it that way okay all right so has shows like Midsummer Murders, um, Murdoch Mysteries, 
Agatha Christie content like Perot, Agatha Raisin, and uh, Doc Martin and different other Br different British shows. There's also another service called Indie Flicks. Indie Flicks has a lot of independent films. Okay, uh, I believe this is a movie like from South Korea. A lot of stuff that you can just watch, you know, in subtitle form. Um, in different different languages, but then it also has some classic movies on here, things like The Magnificent Seven, He the Night, The Hustler, Third Man, and some classic TV shows like The Beverly Hillbillies, Bonanza, Dragnet, uh, stuff like that. So uh, someone would say, well, I've heard about independent independent flicks, and it also has some um, kind of I'd say old black and white cartoons and stuffs on there too. So someone says, well, this is just for someone that loves independent film. Well, no, it's got, you know, cowboy movies and stuff like that on there, too. So might just want to give it a try. It is free for seven days and then just resubscribe for another seven days. Okay. So like I was saying, basically what you do is the easiest way to do this is to log in to the RB Digital app. Go to the, move, the menu, click Entertainment. Select entertainment, select the service you want, select the show or movie. And then kind of click where it says check out. Uh, the first time you'll need to create a new password, okay? And then use that, the same RB Digital a uh, password that you had is what I recommend, okay? Download the app to your device, the Roku App Store, and then run the app, okay? Log in with your username and password. Once seven days are up, just go back to the RB Digital and then just recheck it out for another seven days, okay? All right, so let's talk about some of our continuing education classes. So I'll kind of show you that real quick. So basically you go to our GCHRL website and go up here and you click menu and you go to where it says education and research and then go and click where it says continuing education and it'll be listed as universal classes. Okay. Now I may have to log in so I'm going to kind of jump over here real quick and I'll type in with my login stuff. There we go. And that is actually one of those where you do have to set up your own username and password. Okay. So, that's a, I think they've changed, recently changed their um, background there. That looks wonderful. All right, so, it taught, so what exactly is universal class? Well, Universal Class has hundreds of online continuing education classes, okay? You can earn continuing education units. So if you know someone that needs those for their job, this is a good, fun way to do that. Of course, you can do it at home. With documentation of your uh, continuing education credit, contact hours, and a big one is course completion. The big thing is that it actually is a great way thing to add to your um your resume, say you've had some classes, let's kind of talk about some of the different classes that they have that are available. Big one here is some, I have listed about four, I've listed four right here to kind of uh, go through the assortment and I'll talk about why I chose those.
So the first one here is HTML coding site and get into coding. That's a great way to start uh, building a website. So that's more of our technical coding part. This part here, they have a, and that's 10 hours. Okay. This part, this uh, class here says a general receptionist. Uh, one thing I point about that is basically, let's say it's two people that are similar, have the same kind of educational background and everything. Um, but there's one person that has actually had some training on a job that they're going for. Well, the person may be interesting and say, okay, well, I can see this person completed an entire six hour, you know, course about this job. Let's say general receptionist or something that could give you a leg up, you know, in a job field. So in a crowded uh, job uh, field. So there you go. So our next one here is someone that, let's say, maybe you have done a program like Excel in the past and you want to learn more about the brand new version that has come out or our current version is 2019, okay? So the 2019 uh, version of Excel, there you go, it's a 12 hour course and then you'll have your certificate to share that you do have that for course versus someone else putting in for a job, or you can say at least to someone, someone says, so, you know, how have you been? Oh, I'm doing great. Oh, I'm taking a class to update on the Excel that we use at work all the time. There you go. So, and the other one is basically someone trying to start a home-based business. So, another class that we teach is actually uh, selling on uh, eBay and Facebook Marketplace. Want to start your own home-based business? Well, this person may want to choose, like, let's say, making soaps. So you could make specialty soaps, sell them uh, locally, sell them at, let's say, the um, uh, the open market that we have sometimes up near the library in Evans, and the uh, you know start your own home-based business. There you go, right there. So let's take a look at some of our options. And I'll show one intro video to one of the classes. So it kind of gives an overview of recommended stuff that they have on here. So let's look at our full course here, course catalog. Now if we scroll down, you'll get some great ideas. There's accounting, crafts and hobbies, okay. Business um, classes, uh, career training, computer uh, training. Show that real quick. So that kind of goes into what we were talking about. Here's Excel, computer literacy, cybersecurity 101, coding. Adobe products, Adobe Photoshop, digital photography, which is an eight hour class, goes into Google Docs, Google Sheets, oh, how to run an effective help desk, publisher, OneNote, QuickBooks, Windows 10 is listed on there as well. So let's go back. Here's career training, general education, finance, history classes. See, home do it yourself. Let's see what they have here. Personal wellness coach, professional organizer, trainer. There's your waiter waitress training. How to improve your cir cir um, uh, what's this circulation. That's just get up and walk. How to improve your concentration. Speed reading. Okay. Technical writing, cake decorating, buying and selling, antiques and collectibles. Here's bartending. There's a candle making. Let's see. So let's look at our candle making here. So 
So a lot of times it'll have a video intro. I'm, I was look. I'll look for one that we can watch. One look quick little video intros. You'll kind of get the gist of everything. So this gives a big course description of the course. Okay, and if we scroll down, so they've got some great videos in there. Other things related, how to bake cookies, pie making, cooking and baking, bread baking, introduction to gardening, knitting, wedding crafts and projects. And then we have our course lessons and it lists each one. Now one of the things is, let's say you didn't want to take the whole course, which I could understand that, especially if it's something you're wanting to specifically learn. Uh, because this is a step-by-step, -step, you could find out more information because of the ability to be able to rewind, you know, kind of in the class, go to lesson two, jump back and forth if you wanted to, or just jump to just a certain area of something that you want to know about, okay? And it's broken up into the different lessons, kind of like chapters. We have our information here demonstrating step-by-step -step candle making. And here's our biggest one right here. This is our, uh, you'll have, when you finish or complete the course, you'll actually have a document, uh, your lifelong learning achievement, earn official certificate documenting course hours and CEU credits and verify your certificate with unique serial number online, okay? View and share your certificate online or download or print PDF, okay? Display your certificate on your resume and promote your achievement using social media. So they have ways that you can share that you did complete the course, okay? And learn something new. All right, so let's go back. Let's see. Creative writing workshop, critical thinking. Sounds interesting. Creative writing. Let's see, it's etiquette, event planning. Let's see, pet care, science. Let's see, teachers, special education. And let's go look at the crafts and hobbies one. Cake decorating, calligraphy, soap making. There's our soap making. Course descriptions. And join the course. Now there was, let me look and see here. I know there's a video, one of these has an intro video on here. I'm trying to remember which one. There we go. We won't show the whole video, but just a little bit of intro just so that you know a little bit more about how it kind of breaks things down. Before you can really start to feel comfortable in the kitchen, it's important to understand why you are there and what you hope to accomplish. Like all things you learn in life, you must have a good, solid foundation before you can build on it and become proficient. What is cooking? Cooking can be loosely defined as any action in your kitchen that gets you from point A, a pile of ingredients, to point B, a meal. It is the act of assembling ingredients and or applying heat to ingredients for human consumption. This means that cooking can be as simple as assembling vegetables to make a salad 
or as complicated as combining a number of different ingredients on a stovetop over a period of three hours. Cooking is actually an umbrella term for a number of tasks and activities. It's kind of like when you think of the word clothes. When you get dressed in the morning, the word clothes really means quite a few things. Undergarments, shirts, shorts, pants, dresses, and socks all fall under the category, even though it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to wear them all at once. In the same way, you can cook using a variety of different methods. You don't necessarily use them all at once, but each of them still counts as cooking. There are ten basic types of cooking. 1. Roasting Roasting is done when you cook food using dry heat. In the historical sense, this includes placing a large piece of meat on a stick and putting it over flames. In the more modern sense, this includes putting things in your oven. Meat and vegetables are the most commonly roasted food items. 2. Broiling Broiling is also typically done in an oven. However, the heat comes from the top of the oven rather than the bottom. You can broil anything from a toasted cheese sandwich to fish. 3. Grilling Grilling is when you cook food directly over a heat source. It includes outdoor grilling on a barbecue as well as indoor grilling. For example, when you cook a steak in this way, you place it directly on the grill above the charcoal or flames. 4. Frying Food is fried when it is cooked in some sort of fat, like lard, butter, or oil. It can be done in an oven, a fryer, or a pan. Fried foods are usually higher in calories and fat than food cooked in other ways. 5. Boiling This occurs when the food is placed in boiling water. Many vegetables are cooked this way, although meat and noodles are also commonly boiled. 6. Simmering Simmering is a slow form of cooking. Food is not brought to a boiling point, instead being allowed to warm over a long period of time. It can be done in a pan, the oven, or a slow cooker. 7. Steaming Steaming is done by using the hot vapors of boiling water to cook foods. The food usually never touches the actual water. This is best to keep all the vitamins and nutrients in your food intact. 8. Microwaving This modern cooking type uses the microwave to warm or cook food. Because of their versatility, microwaves can actually be used to perform a number of different cooking types. For example, you can boil, steam, or even defrost things in the microwave. 9. Assembling This type of cooking uses no direct heat. It calls for the combination of uncooked or pre-cooked ingredients. Salads, sandwiches, and even more complex meals can be made this way. Baking Baking is often considered a field all its own. It is basically cooking done in an oven. Although you can technically bake anything from pizza to tuna casseroles, most people associate baking with sweets or bread. What is baking? As we mentioned before, baking is really just one of the ten types of cooking. However, as we will understand it for this lesson, as well as for the entire course, baking is a separate type of kitchen activity. It almost always centers on a different set of ingredients, skills, and utensils than cooking in the traditional sense. Consider it this way. When most people think of baking, they conjure up images of sweets and bread-like foods that are made of batter or dough put in the oven and cooked. Things like bread, cakes, cookies, and pastries fall into this category. If we stick to this idea of baking, there are a few common ingredients that will arise time and time again. If you find yourself faced with a recipe containing these ingredients and calling for oven time, it's a pretty safe bet that you will be baking. Flour, either wheat or white. Sugar, salt, fat, oil, butter, margarine, shortening, lard. Eggs, yeast. All right, very interesting. So baking... <laughs> just kind of refers to putting something in the oven. And broiling is using the top broiler, of course. Okay, so the course description, the training, okay. 
cooking versus, what did it say? Cooking versus baking or something. I didn't see it. It was very quick. Pantry essentials using cooking recipes. There you go right there. As our lessons, as our other outcomes, and then we also have our completion form, okay? Okay, so that's kind of an overview of our universal class. Now it's a great time to get started on learning something new. And like I said, you don't have to do the entire class. You could actually just kind of jump in there, learn what you're specifically looking for, and then kind of jump out. Other continuing education, we have Mango, which is a great program to learn a new language and or it's a great way of learning English as a second language because that's on there as well. And it has over 60 different languages. In our apps class, we'll be talking about Google Translate and some other stuff. So definitely join me for that. That will be tomorrow, our apps swaps class. Also, another great service to have is BrainFuse. This is great for homework help. It does have live tutoring. You have to check the hours. I think that it's, it's changed recently. They have a writing lab to help with uh, writing better. Also, uh, Skill Surfer allows you to build uh, videos and tests. And also, there is the, where is it? The, the flash bulb. You can create and share flashcards. Uh, for tests, test yourself and help it create your own little games kind of stuff for it. E-Parachute discovered the college uh, that match your skills and interests, which I guess is kind of like uh, what is your parachute, okay? So it's that version. And of course, Meet, it's its own version of a private virtual study room, kind of like Zoom, I guess, but it's free because it's, this program's off through the library, okay? Any questions so far? Anyway, so let's keep going. Definitely feel free to post any questions in the chat. So let's talk about some of our lesser known resources that you may or may not know about. Did you know that you can access the Augusta Chronicle collection? Uh, currently, it's 1994 to current with no pictures, and the images of currently is of the paper from 2017 to the current version. Now, a big question I get asked is the RB Digital has magazines, okay, but does the RB Digital have Consumer Reports? No, but Consumer Reports is something separate. You have to access the digital library on gchrl.org uh, for more information about that okay another one if you're trying to inquire or do any kind of research on a business we do have access to merchant intelligent okay research uh, 70 million u.s private businesses also if you do want to look up any kind of heritage stuff you can use the heritage um the ancestry at our library it is not, um, I'll say, customized to you. <laughs> it's like a general search. So that's kind of the way that works. And the other thing is that you can actually access Heritage Quest. Talk to Wind Librarians about setting that up so that you can actually use Heritage Quest at home. Okay. Also, if you're looking into any kind of future travel or just want to look at some ebooks, you can actually access the Gale digital reference books and then it'll actually show the Gale books, lots of different references in there. And it has a lot of the DK uh, travel books are in there. Uh, we'll down, let you print the whole book. It won't let you print the whole book, but you can print certain pages, like about five pages or so, and get the information you're kind of looking for. What about other resources? Well, currently we don't really have any big activities going off on because we're just kind of staying safe. Of course, no classes at the library, but in the future you can look to things like our 
course, gchrl.org. Um, Check out the page turner. Please sign up for the page turner newsletter and the technology page turner uh, newsletter. Those will be sent off. Those will include my classes for the month <laughs> and other digital classes that are available as well. Okay. Now we're kind of coming to the end of class. Um, so I haven't had a ton of questions about Libby. Hopefully that's because I answered most of the questions. <laughs> Hopefully um, I try to anticipate questions and or if I've taught a class, I try to incorporate the questions I've been asked in the past to basically kind of answer folks questions. You know, so sometimes it's like I'm talking to myself, which is kind of funny because I kind of just try to remember what people have asked me in the past and then just kind of go back and talk about that again, okay, and answer those questions again. Uh, there's many brochures that can be found at the library. Um, one of the things, big things about is the, the Columbia County Library in Evans. You can actually go downstairs and there's a whole bunch of different um, reference um, handouts and stuff. Of course, any of the librarians are happy to help you in any way. You can call in Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. My video may almost be uh, ready for Libby. And I may finish up here and then show that. Hopefully, it'll finish in just a minute here. But any questions? Okay, so let's talk about what we covered today. So we talked about what you would need to access our, our resources at the library. Of course, our biggest one was having a library card. Other thing was being able to access the Pines app, so you can put books on hold. Of course, if you want to do curbside holds pickup, contact the library through the gchrl.org website. The information is there um, basically on the main page. Um, and also talking about you can renew your books. And the great part about the Pine apps, I don't know if I mentioned that before, is that we'll remind you if you do have aler alerts on, no, excuse me, notifications on, it'll actually pop up and give you a notification to let you know that your, um, that your book is due or anything. And then, of course, we talked about Libby. And I do believe that video is ready. Let's look and see. Yay, okay. All right. Yay, so I got the video ready. So let's look at it real quick. See if I can get it, uh, how do I get it full screen? Okay, nope. All right, so let's go ahead and watch this. So basically you have a shelf section with Libby. It pops up with loans, holds, and tags. And right now I'm just looking at books. I haven't checked out any books, okay? Pops up, it's showing a book at the bottom. Holds is like a wait list, okay? So we have our book here at the bottom. It has a play a sample. It also can list with tags. And also you can click details to see more details about our books. So when we click for details, we can actually scroll down to see what that information is.
and then it actually shows our books if we're going to do any kind of browsing to see what books are available it's very colorful it'll even ask you questions sometimes uh, questions of new audiobooks and what's available and I'm going to actually go back to that in just a second I like how it says Colonel Mustard in the study. So those are like mystery books. Here's kid books, kids reads. And as you can see, 14,000 different fiction books, 4,000 romance novels, 3,000 thrillers. So it has a lot larger collection of books than we have with just RB Digital. Out of this world reads, so like sci-fi. Young adult books are available. Getting to know you. And books about books. <laughs> Some quick books in there. I guess it's because they're short. And kind of like digging in the dirt. Some how to books. Some fantasy books and some murder mystery books. And I go back up to the top. And if I scroll down some, let's tap where it says new and audiobooks. So as you see, there's a large collection. The biggest thing is we have place on hold, play a sample, tag, place on hold. And we're actually going to play a sample in a minute. So let's tap where it says popular audiobooks. So where the calendar is shows that you can actually put the book on hold for later. And let's listen to Harry Potter for a minute and we'll get a quick view of what our uh, player actually looks like. Okay. Now it loads, it pops up. We actually have a timer, a sleep timer that'll turn on. Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by J.K. Rowling, read by Jim Dale, an unabridged performance brought to you by Pottermore from J.K. Rowling. Chapter 1, The Boy Who Lived. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of Number 4 Privet Drive were proud to say they were perfectly normal, thank you very much. They were the last people you'd expect to be involved in anything straight. We're about to reach the end of our, our little demonstration here. So that's kind of it for this today's class. So any other questions or anything? Hopefully this video was informative and it answered a lot of questions that you may have. And of course you can share this with friends or family members because it's just on YouTube. And do realize that because it will be pre-recorded, because um, of recording it now of course, <laughs> it will be pre-recorded, you can actually uh, jump back and forth depending on which um, information that you're looking for. Okay, So definitely try out. our new Libby app and like I said the big one is once you install the app on your device it'll say well what library are you from make sure you say Greater Clarks Hill Regional Library System and then choose where it says Georgia download destination and enter your library card number and then you should have access and again if it's slow in some way it may be because of uh, someone trying to uh, they're trying to transfer stuff over and that could take up to 24 hours. Mine was immediate, so I didn't have that issue. 
but we are trying a new service so that actually may be pop, um, possible. Okay. So thank you for joining me today. So any other questions or anything? And I'll kind of wrap up talking about some of the classes that we're going to be doing tomorrow and stuff we'll be doing uh, next week as well. Okay. Hey, it's me again. <laughs> that was my goofy voice, literally. Okay, so so our big stuff tomorrow, we're actually going to be doing an app swap class, which is a new class we're going to be doing. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'll disappear so you can see our calendar here. It'll be a lot of fun. I'm going to be talking about about 15 to 20 different apps that I think are really important to use. And most of the ones I'll be talking about is free. And I may also throw Libby in there too. So if someone comes to the app swap class and they don't know about Libby, maybe talking about that briefly as well. And then tomorrow afternoon, we're going to be doing another new class, Introduction to Google Cardboard, a VR. So come join us for that. A lot of fun stuff on that. And then next week, we'll start off on Tuesday, which will be the 20th. We'll be talking about internet shopping and digital couponing. Uh, a lot of folks may realize today is Prime Day, so you can actually get some really fantastic deals on Amazon uh, right today, believe it or not. And then on the 21st, we're actually going to be doing Gadget Help at 11 o'clock uh, on Zoom. And then on the 20th, Ninth, we'll be doing that as well. How do you get a um, how do you get involved with that or get scheduled for the gadget help with me, Alex, on Zoom? Basically, just contact the library uh, about the 21st in Harlem. So contact the Harlem Library and then contact the Grovetown Library. They'll give you more information and basically how to schedule your time uh, at that time frame uh, to be able to get some one-on-one -on -one video chat help. Okay with your device, uh, so there you go right there, laptop or whatever. Okay, and then on the second, we're going to do a fun class. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by J.K. Rowling. Read by Jim Dale. An unabridged performance. Stop that. All right. That's funny. I was like, what was that noise? Okay. So anyway, and then we'll we'll end up. See, it's a great thing. Choose Harry Potter. You know, it's, it's October. So uh, on the twenty second, we're going to do in Python coding scratch spot the difference prank. So that's going to be really neat. So uh, get a friend or family member try to play a little spot the difference picture game, and then when they try to click, it jumps up and it's a ghoul going. Rawr. So that'll be a lot of fun too. And then on the twenty twenty. Uh, 21st, 22nd, 20, 21st, 22nd, and then on the, uh, the last month, excuse me, the last uh, week of the month, <laughs> last week of the month, 27th, uh, on Tuesday, we're going to do an introduction to Unity, make an amazing robot game. So that's actually our first time doing that, a Unity class. So come join me for that. And then on the 28th, we're going to be doing our Python coding prank thing again. And then the afternoon, we'll be doing a Python, Raspberry Pi projects, how to make a sound trap on the 28th, okay? And on the 29th, we're going to be doing our gadget help on Zoom with me. And on the 29th in the afternoon, we'll be doing Halloween Scratch Basics, Let's Make a Spooky Game, okay? Let you know our library is open with limited services and hours. Curbside Holds Pickup is available. You can check out gchrl.org for details or call the library with questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for updates. Uh, remember, we are having a subscribe drive so if we can get a hundred people to subscribe to our youtube channel uh, we could get our own customized youtube address you can or you can search youtube for gchrl videos and it'll pop up right there okay 
Well, thank you for joining me this afternoon. <laughs> Hope you learned something new about Libby. Fantastic service. Lots of free books on there. Definitely tell friends and family about the service. And of course, have fun reading books. Doing audiobooks is really the big thing that folks want to do is the audiobooks and everything. They're convenient, listen to it in their car, having some headphones and stuff. Learning something new as well. And hopefully I taught you something new with our Let's Talk About Libby class here and other resources as well. So enjoy, stay safe. It's a beautiful day outside. It's nice and sunny right now. Maybe go out and have a walk and everything. And I'll get to see you in the future, in a future class. Have a great day. <laughs> see you next time. Bye-bye.